Hi, it's Pete Cohen and welcome to the My365 podcast series. Today's podcast is a truly extraordinary podcast. Why? Well, it is our member of the year for 2018, Jill Donaldson. I would really encourage you to listen very carefully uh, to this podcast. It was such an interesting one to do because we were really looking at extraordinary. What is extraordinary? What is ordinary? And actually, for many of the people who do extraordinary things, they think of them as just ordinary. And then for people who want to do extraordinary things, uh, see those things as extraordinary and they never know where to start. So I know deep down we all want to change our lives. We want to be better. We want to be better in our health and our well-being and our family and our work. Most of us do want to do that. And if you do, this is a podcast I would really encourage you to listen and to learn for yourself because let's all live an extraordinary life. Take care and we'll see you on the other side. This is Pete Cohen. This is a very special podcast. This is a podcast that we only do, we've only done it, this is the third time, and it's our member of the year, our member of the year for 2018, I was going to say 2019, (laughs) uh, is Jill Donaldson. Jill, thank you so much for being here today. How are you? I'm really good, thanks, Pete. Thank you for inviting me to come. Well, um, you are our member of the year. I think maybe a good place to start, which is this. When you found out that you are our member of the year at the summit yes. uh, a few weeks ago. Yes. What was that like for you? Shock, complete shock. Um, I think we were, everybody was waiting who's going to be the member of the year. Um, everybody was doing the drum roll. It was like, um, who can it be? I can't think who it's going to be. And then when my name came up on the screen and my photograph, I was just completely shocked. Yeah. And I think I came up onto the stage, but I couldn't really speak. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, was, um, I was just totally taken by surprise. And why were you shocked? Why do you think it was such a big shock? I think when you do something every day, um, like I've been a member of My365 for such a long time, you do it, I, I felt like I was doing it for myself. I wasn't, I, I never imagined, I, I don't think I'd do anything extraordinary. So I didn't mm. think that I um, was member of the year material really. Yeah. Uh, there's so many people in the group who are doing amazing things every day and have got amazing stories to tell. So yeah. I didn't really um, consider myself to be in that category. Well, I'd like to talk to you about one of the words you just used there, which was uh, extraordinary. Yeah. And to look at in life, what truly is extraordinary? Mm. Uh, I think what is ordinary is uh, people who are just doing the same thing all the time and knowing that they probably want more in some areas of their life and not really going anywhere. I think that's quite ordinary. Personally, I think what's extraordinary uh, for most people who are doing what is extraordinary, they don't think it is. Yes. You know, they, yeah. and, and, and I think truly what is extraordinary is working on getting better at, at things and doing them consistently every single day where most people would just give up because for, for whatever reason. Yeah. But why don't we just look at, tell us a little bit about what you feel that you've achieved since, since being a, a member of My365. I think for me, the uh, biggest turnaround since I've been working with My365 is changing a negative situation into a positive situation. Mm. So uh, always trying to uh, turn things around and maybe look at things differently. And um, yeah, the biggest change I would say has been in my mindset. Let's talk about uh, something that we were talking about briefly before we started, which was where you lived Mm. and moving away and what that was like, and yeah. that was a big mind shift. Tell us about that. Yeah, well five years ago we moved from um, from living in the south to living in Derbyshire and we lived in Milton Keynes which is a you know it's a growing city and it's sort of a 24-hour city so everything's there on your doorstep yeah. and then you move to a rural community is much quieter, it's much more insular and at the same time I 
uh, started a business, so I was trying to um, work in on my own for the first time for a long time. I'd always worked with a team. So it was a big period of change for us five years ago. Um, two young children settling them into, finding new schools, settling them into new schools. And it felt really overwhelming. And I spent the first two years not wanting to be there, wanting to move back and wishing that things hadn't changed, wishing that I hadn't made certain decisions. So when I found My365 um, in early 2016, the reason that I, um, I joined originally was to try and get out of that mindset and try and start the year off in a positive way and see what I could achieve during that year. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Because again, that might not seem like a particularly extraordinary thing, but I think it's one of the most extraordinary things that any human being will do. Because again, the easy option would have been to live with regret. Like, I don't want to be here, this isn't the place for me, but you decided to, to, to turn that around. So what happened as a consequence of you turning that mindset around? Just started working um, on myself every day, watching the daily broadcasts, getting a little dose of inspiration every morning, and that sets you up for the day. So that was it was really just small steps, and if I look back at how I was then and how I am now, it's a huge difference, but it wasn't all done in one go. Yeah. It, was, it was bit by bit. So when you look back at the mm -hmm. person that you were in 2016 compared to the person that you are now, yeah. what do you think is the, the, the most significant differences? I would say um, positive mental attitude, I would say, yeah. and a can-do attitude, and a belief that I can, that I can affect how the future is. Yeah. rather than worrying about things that maybe have been done to me or things that have been forced on me. So, yeah, that's the, that's the biggest change. See, so again, you might not think that that's extraordinary, but that has to be one of the most extraordinary things that any human being can do, which is to say, I'm going to create my future. Yeah. Right? Because, as, you know, I remember reading that years ago that, you know, from Napoleon Hill saying, do you reckon only 2% of people would could tell you, I know where I'm going and I'm going to take control of, of my life. And I know it's not like a, a project which is finished. This is an ongoing process, yeah. uh, you know, for you. But I know I think you were shocked, okay, because we, we chose you. Uh, but one of the reasons we chose you is I'm always looking for consistency. When you're coaching people, it's a two-way process, right? I mean, maybe not for everyone, but for me it is. You know, when I've been coached, if, if I didn't feed back to my coach what I'm doing, it's like, well, he can't really, we can only go so far. So I've obviously watched you, uh, and I've just watched you just showing up and sharing, this is what I'm doing, this is what's working, answering two very simple questions. The questions changed, but now they're, you know, what went well, what needs work, and moving forwards. And I want to thank you for that because there's only a, a, a very few people that are very consistent with that. And, you know, you've heard me speak about that word consistency and what that word means is something that is held together. What is holding something together? So what is holding you together in terms of creating the life that you now have? Well, the... Um we talk a lot about rituals in My365. I think for me, having a system of well-established rituals is the way that I've achieved consistency. So the weekly reviews on a Friday, that's part of my week now. We've now, um, I've now started uh, writing a plan on the Monday and sharing the plan. So you have a plan, then you have a review. So what happens in the middle is sometimes it's a tick list and yeah. just working through. But I find that as I work through um, rituals, they kind of give me strength. They, they give me strength and inspiration yeah. and that makes the day better for me. And if I miss those, then I will, be, I will not have such a good day. So, so that's again about designing, yeah. isn't it? Um, so tell me about some of the rituals that, that you do. How, what's a typical day for you? What sort of time do you get up? And Early, early, early. Not as early yeah. as you, Pete. Yeah. But <laughs> I, um, I've been getting up at 4.30 and I, um, I usually do a priming meditation first thing after I've drunk some water. Then I'll do some exercise for about 20 minutes and then I um, usually drink some hot lemon juice with 
some ginger and turmeric and I write my journal. So that's kind of, those are the, those are the fundamentals that I do first thing in the morning. Yeah. And then I, I add other things on depending on what's happening. So sometimes... So they're like non-negotiables for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And I can, I can make them shorter. I can make the exercise shorter. I can make the meditation easier and shorter. Uh, and sometimes I don't have the lemon water, but you know, they, 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 that's the basic start of the day, I yeah. would say. And um, the, the, the other things that happen after that um, can vary depending on what I'm working on. So sometimes we're working on a masterclass, I do a couple of sheets from the masterclass, or sometimes we're um, finishing a masterclass assessment, so I'll um, write up my notes ready for the assessment, or I'll yeah. record a video ready for the assessment. So it's, there's always something to do, and sometimes we're catching up on podcasts as well. So yeah, lots to, lots to keep up with, really. So with... Have you ever noticed when days you don't do rituals, how yeah. what your day is like? Well, weekends weekends are a little bit easier. I don't tend to do as much um, on a weekend, and um, sometimes I think, well, maybe I should do more at the weekend. Maybe I would mm. have. Um, sometimes it's nice to have a, a bit bit of a lie in, but yes. I think yeah, don't not not too much because I think you can then lose momentum and it's hard to get going again. Yeah. So you know when we uh, when we talk about. Again, we were talking about before we were started filming about that mindset that people have who have a job mm. to then uh, do something for themselves. Yeah, you know, this, it is a different mindset. Yeah, you know, that security. And but the, the thing I wanted to ask you is, what's your opinion about why people find it hard to go to work on themselves, like they are their own business? You know, them being well and healthy. And yeah, why do you think people struggle with that? I think it's hard to do. I think it's hard to think about what you need to do. You have to accept that there's some things you want to change. And you have to understand that changing things takes work. Yeah. And I know a lot of people say they haven't got time for, um, for some of the rituals. And I, I've, I've extended my time by getting up so early in the morning. If I got up at 7 o'clock, I wouldn't have time to do all of those things. So it's about creating time for yourself. To, to work on yourself because you will benefit from it. Yeah. But I know a lot of people are against getting up early in the morning because they're going to be too tired. But I think there's, there's ways of managing that yeah. and there's ways of, um, of making it work for you. Yeah, I think one of the things I've always found so interesting is, just like you said, it is, it is work. Yeah. And if you already have a job that maybe you, maybe you don't enjoy your job and you, you feel that you're working at that and then you're working at this. Yeah. But is, it, is this work for you or is it... Now, no. not work, it's just, this is just what I yeah. do. It's not work, no, yeah. no. And if I'm not careful, it can expand out into work time as well because I love, I love doing it and I love the reading and I love um, learning uh, lots of different things. And so that can expand into your time. So you have to keep it a little bit under control. Otherwise, you're not doing some of the day-to-day -day things that need to be done. Yeah. But um, no, it's definitely not. I don't consider it work, no. Yeah. I just I think it's so fascinating when uh, we can rely on things. So do you rely on your on your your rituals? Yes, yes, I do a bit actually, and um, and I rely on the input from the group. Yeah. So sometimes if the group goes quiet, it feels it feels not quite right. Yeah. So um, you have to go and find some inspiration from somewhere else, yeah. which is fine. There's plenty of inspiration out there if you look for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think also another reason I want to, you know, thank you is because I believe other people watch you and are inspired by you because you're someone who is doing what they need to do. You know, I don't think there's any real short, we all want shortcuts, right? We all want things yeah. easier, but the shortcut to a successful, happy, healthy life is, there. maybe there are some, but you want to simplify this, this kind of, I don't like to use this word, but the battlefield, the battlefield of life, of trying to get your health, your family, your work, everything yeah. working. It's like, if you're not careful, you can get so distracted, you can let things get on top of you. But um, uh, let's just talk a little bit about the masterclasses. So of the masterclasses, have there been, have there been any that have really kind of stood out for you? Yeah, well... Um... Best Year Yet is brilliant. That's where I started. So I've done Best Year Yet twice now and I'm looking forward to... Another it's a, Yeah, it's a great way of kicking off the year, I think. And yeah. um, reviewing where what you've done in the past year and what, what you set out to do and which of those things you achieved and then putting those things to, to the side and moving forward with a new year. So yeah, that's probably my favourite one. I love Creative Genius and I didn't think I would because um, yeah. I don't... 
I'd never felt comfortable with drawing and now I draw in my journal every day. So that's a big change for me. Mm. Actually, the journaling is a new thing for me as well. We only started that at the beginning of this year and I haven't missed a day. So um, the rituals have kind of built up um, on as, as time has gone on. But yeah, the, the masterclasses are all great, but I would say those two were being my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Well, you better get ready for the next one up your not up your creative genius uh, upgrade your life yes because i think for me what i love is working with people hearing what's kind of working what they're doing and then having the opportunity to do something again yeah but make it better well that's right because each time you do it you do it differently yeah and i think sometimes it's better if you're doing a, a master class for the second time don't actually look at the notes from the first time. Just start it as if it's brand new. Mm. And then you can compare it afterwards. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Yeah, I think it's funny, isn't it? Sometimes you might read a book and, on personal development or something and yeah. you read it and you might have got something out of it. But then if you read it again, sometimes you, you see and you hear things that you didn't see before. Yeah. Um, I think one of the reasons I'm excited about uh, this next masterclass uh, upgrade your life is I've been really looking at cells in the body and how there's yeah. a book called Molecules of Emotion by Candice Pert. It was written, she's a PhD a lecturer in, in emotion and there's something called emotions which we all experience yeah. but there's something called feelings and feelings and emotions I think are they're two separate things and I want to really help people uh, go with their feelings of what their feelings are telling them rather yeah. than letting our emotions rule yeah. our life. So emotionally, how would you say, what are the emotions that are now more prevalent in your life compared to maybe a few years ago? Oh, I would say, I would say I'm definitely calmer than I used to be. I'm much less anxious. I worry about things less and I kind of go with the flow a bit more, mm. even though sometimes, you know, I revert back to not wanting to change. But I think when, mm. you, when you're going through a process of change, um, it, it normalises change, which is great because you need to change to grow. So I think, um, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would say that I'm still work in progress on change, but I definitely am calmer and yeah. less worried about things. Which obviously doing this is, was a big thing, right? Because yeah. again, <laughs> putting yourself in the spotlight and also, you know, when we, when we announced you as uh, member of the year, that was a big challenge for you, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I just really appreciate you saying, okay, I, I, I'm, I, I feel what I feel, uh, but there's something more here. Yeah. And, you know, one of my goals is that people will listen to this, people who are my 365 members and be inspired by your, by your journey, but also people out there people, everyday people who are ordinary, who mm. want to do extraordinary things to mm. be healthy, which is an extraordinary thing to do, yes, right? Yes, yes. I mean, just to be healthy and well is extraordinary. Yes. Because most people aren't. And sometimes when, you, when you're living that life and you've, you've achieved a level of health, you forget that other people don't feel like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there is because a... it's normal. It's normal for us. Yeah. yeah. We know there's, there's a number of pandemics going on. One of them is with weight and yeah. with all of the diseases that people are from dementia to high blood pressure to diabetes, that so many of those would be eradicated if yeah. people became healthy. So being healthy yeah. is an extraordinary thing. And yeah. you are a picture of health, right? Because you Thank exercise, you. well, you are, right? You, you, you live well. Yes. As in, when we used to think we living to. well was yes. eating and drinking, and but living well is, you know, looking after yourself. And then the other area is, is, is family, being, a, yes. being a, an extraordinary mum. Let's just talk about that. So you have two children. You yes. have a boy who's uh, eight. eight and a yes. girl who's 13. Yes, nearly 13. And yeah. what difference do you think this has made to them in the investment that you've made on yourself? Well, it's interesting because um, obviously we've been watching the 7 o'clock broadcast for a long time and they've always been there. I've been watching them in the kitchen and people come in, the, the kids come in in the morning and they'll sit down next to me and then listen to a bit of it and then they'll wander off. But it's there and it's being absorbed. Yes. And um, my son uh, recently came in with a list of his morning rituals that he wrote down on a piece of paper and stepped to the fridge. He did include um, watching the iPad as one of his morning rituals. But yeah. that's, uh, yeah, that, it was great that, that that kind of rubbed off on him and he felt that that was something that, that should be done. Well, I think if we really truly look at what is extraordinary, yeah. one of the most extraordinary things anyone will ever do, we know is health, 
But one of the most extraordinary things a leader would do, which is what a parent is, a parent is a, is a leader, yeah. is lead your children forwards. Yeah. And we know that children do not do what they're told. No. You know, or if they do, they do it begrudgingly. Yeah. Children learn by copying yes. and mimicking. Yes. So it's not what you say, yes. it's what you do. Yes, that's absolutely and, right. And yeah. you, know, you might not think that's an extraordinary thing, yeah. but just imagine the difference it would make if more parents would take better care of themselves. Yes. So they become role models to their children. So yeah. I think yeah. that's truly extraordinary. And then also let's look at work because I know that's again something, you know, we've been, you know, we again before before we started this, we were just talking and you have your own business and yes. you know everything there is to know about fabrics and Tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay, so I've worked in the garment business for a long time since I, well, I started sewing when I was 12 and then I um, went to university and I studied um, garments and technology around garments and textiles. So I've worked in the garment business all of my life and uh, I left my job five years ago to set up on my own as, um, as a sourcing expert, sourcing and developing technical clothing for um, other people's brands. I don't have a brand of my own, but I work with brand owners to bring their ideas and their products through into production. So that's what I do, um, and I've been doing that for um, five years. Yeah, but also you're very you're passionate about that, but you're also passionate about, tell us what else that you're passionate about. Well, I'm passionate about health and fitness because it's been uh, like my second career that's always run alongside my, my main job. And I, I've learned to teach fitness classes. I taught step back in the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, then I- It wasn't sort of, just me then. No, it wasn't just you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been to all the fitness conventions and I, I love doing it because it was something that I loved for myself. So, and I've been a runner and uh, I've always been in cy into cycling. So fitness has been a big part of my life. And it was sort of a, a little hobby job that I ran alongside my main job. And uh, after I stopped uh, teaching the more energetic classes, I started teaching yoga type classes, yoga and Pilates. So I'm qualified yoga and Pilates instructor as well. Yeah. But you're also interested now in potentially developing something in that field as well. Yeah, well, it's interesting because um, we, uh, I'm really interested in nutrition. I'm really interested in healthy eating. I've followed various programs about the, way, uh, the best way to um, eat, the best way to maximize your energy, to reduce fat, those sort of things I'm really interested in. So if somebody um, gave me a choice of a book to read, I would always want to read a book about nutrition mm -hmm. or about, um, about healthy, healthy living, healthy eating, so yeah. yeah. Well, again, if we look at what's extraordinary, I suppose what's extraordinary is uh, having your own business, you know, and, 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 and that being uh, successful. And then also what's extraordinary is uh, deciding maybe to reinvent yourself mm. or deciding to do another business. Um, it's a truly extraordinary thing. Yeah. So I it's, hope... hard to, it's hard to think about balancing two businesses or two different yes. ideas at the same time. I did it for a while um, when I was teaching classes in the evening, but at the moment I'm just focusing on my garment business. Yes. And the other thing's a hobby. So um, just as we bring this podcast to, to, to an end, t tell us a little bit about the community of My365ers in yeah. terms of what that's been like being around people who are on a similar path to you. Yeah. Well, everybody in the group is so different, but everybody has got a story to tell. And it's so amazing. I get inspiration from people who are on completely different tracks to me. And I listen to their story or I just listen to their review, their weekly reviews. And some people, you know, write some things and it's, it's amazing. So it's a really supportive community. Uh, it's the best thing about My365. Yeah, I'd say it is. Apart from your... Probably no, actually, I would probably, say, well, you know, if you say what's the best thing about it for me is the people, because, I mean, it's more important than me, because if I just got up and stood in front of the camera and there was no one there, yeah. uh, it wouldn't be as inspiring. No, as... It's a, it is a true community, yeah. and it feels like a community. Yeah. So uh, what would you say to people that are contemplating some sort of coaching in their life? Why do you think it's important for people to go to work on themselves? I think it's... I think it's um... I think it's essential and I think until people have experienced it, it's maybe hard for people to understand what the benefits could be. Yeah. But I would say give it a go because you can't really lose. 
just you know try it have a think about where you want to move to and yeah. then get someone to help you um, with some ideas of how to do that you know as you were just talking an idea just popped into my head which is something we've spoken about uh, before which is about this thing called syntropy you know this the guy that won the Nobel Prize in 1937 basically saying that every living cell lives to express itself fully yeah. and I think that we all know that somewhere deep down and yeah. I think coaching can be a really great way of helping you grow because yeah. we as we grow I think we we get in our own way about the process that we're making and also the fact that other people often don't like the fact that we're making progress yeah. and that's another reason why it's extraordinary to be around other people that are on the same journey. Yes, it's definitely um, important to surround yourself with positive people. So the, the community gives you that if you don't have it in your everyday life. Yeah. Well, I really want to thank you and I would encourage all of you that uh, you know, watch this to take a moment to think, well, what's my biggest takeaway uh, from what uh, Jill has shared? For me, my, the biggest takeaway is, is really very powerful about what truly is extraordinary. Mm. And it might seem ordinary to most people who are doing it. Yeah. But the ones who aren't doing yes. it, it's really extraordinary. I couldn't do that. Well, you know, you could, no, you could amaze yourself. So thank you uh, so much. It's interesting that we have this post of those of you that are watching this on YouTube uh, that says the best is yet to come. Do you believe that the best is, is yet to come? The Absolutely. best of Jill is, is, is ahead of you. Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I know we gave you a golden duck as well, yes. which uh, yes. I was going to ask you to bring, but oh. where is your golden duck? My golden duck is uh, on the sideboard at home. Yeah, fantastic. It gets polished. It gets polished. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, join us uh, next time for another My 365 podcast.